I am one of the co-directors of Breach, um, along with Billy and Dorothy. Uh, we make shows which are often about real life stories uh, from the recent or distant past, which shed new perspectives on the moments that we're living in. They've got this lovely combination of things going on, which is really a really rigorous approach to research. They start from the basis of of uh, stories, real life stories that they're interested in, whether historical or comparatively contemporary. Um, and then from that, they work through a, a process of research, a process of devising on top of that research, filling in the gaps in the research, if you like. Um, and then from that, they write a, a new piece of work um, that they then um, perform and, and produce and tour. So I've been spending decades researching the plays of Henrik Ibsen. And one of the plays I've written about a lot is A Doll's House, which is from 1879, and which I'd always been aware of was, was based on the life of a, a, a real woman whose name is who was Laura Keeler. At some point, her husband became ill, and he was a bit, apparently had a despotic temper. He was very authoritarian, difficult man, and he, she didn't want to upset him. He became ill and was, was told that he needed to go to Italy to recover from what's probably tuberculosis. And they needed money in order to do that. And he was, I think, a schoolmaster, so not, he didn't, they didn't have a lot of money. And so she, out of desperation, ends up borrowing money without uh, his knowledge. And at that time and in that place, a woman couldn't do that. It was sort of against the law for women um, to, to take out loans without their husband's consent. Um, and so she does this thing that's illegal and um, she is trying to repay the loan. And out of desperation, because she's not managing and she has children already, she's trying to look after, she's at breaking point and she writes kind of a hastily written novel, apparently, in the eff effort to, to get some money to pay back the loan. She sends the draft to Ibsen and she says, please, will you please um, write or contact your publisher on my behalf and see if you could persuade them to, to publish this, or consider at least. And he says, um, well, he's not going to promise anything and uh, he's really unable to help her very much. And that's basically what it amounts to. And then in the end, she, she ends up um, not, not being able to um, meet the, the repayments. So this is the, the beginning of this crisis that A Doll's House is, is built on and that A Doll's House then depicts. Um, so she, she comes to Ibsen's wife, uh, Susanna, and she begs Susanna to intercede, to intercede with Ibsen um, on her behalf. And Susanna tells him the whole story of all the, the troubles with the marriage. And um, Ibsen it thinks, what a fantastic topic for a play. And he essentially, in almost a, you know, almost a white heat, sits down and writes this play. He feels it so vividly, um, and it becomes a big hit. And then her life is torn apart because everybody knows it's her story. I happened across Breach Theatre Company and their fantastic work, It's True, It's True, It's True. And that play was very much about a real life woman who was um, uh, dealt out a, a major injustice. And it was about belatedly putting the record straight and showing how justice could be achieved uh, through literature, in a way, through art. And um, I happened to be able to meet the theater company itself, Billy and Ellis. And I went up to them, I literally just went up to them and said, Here's this true story. Would you like to do something together? And that, that's what happened. <laughs> so my research assisted on this project. And um, at the start of the project, obviously, Kirsten and I did a lot of research on Laura Keeler's life and on her own writings. And I think it's been really fascinating for me to see how, in terms of getting her voice out of, um, of all these texts, to see this image of Laura sh you know, shaping itself before our eyes through her own words. It's been really a six month period of going back and forth on emails, but mainly meeting up uh, a few times, probably about four times we've met up, and then having this week long uh, immersive workshop. This week we've been working with three brilliant performers, Ellis and two other actors who we've brought in. 
Uh, and we've been exploring the source materials that Zen and Kirsten have come up with. So they've been translating documents, um, trawling through archives and libraries to find things for us, and we've been using those as provocations for devising, um, imagining scenes between characters, as well as using some of those translations as of a, as well as using some of the translations as the basis for some verbatim performances. So we've been staging imaginary moments between Laura Keeler and Ibsen, which we know happened, but we don't know anything about. Um, we've been looking at what it must have been like to write and create in this stressful situation when there's a pressure on um, having to repay your debts. Um, we've been trying to analyze the psychological um, mindset that she must have been in. And obviously the only way we can do that is through play and it's been a really playful week. One of the things that really interests me about Laura Keeler's story is it's about the ethics of storytelling. It's about the question of how fair it is to make a piece of art based on someone's real experience. And that is something that we as a theatre company are doing all the time. So these are questions that we're actually asking ourselves. So it really interested me to see a story where this played out so disastrously and so unethically and think about what it means for the process of making theatre in general. The other thing that really interested me was I think it sheds light on... The other thing that really interested me is I think it sheds a totally new perspective on a play that we think we understand. So at Doll's House, everyone says, Nora slams the door and the slam echoes down the years and around the world, and she's the first feminist in theatre because she leaves her husband so defiantly. But actually, what happens when you consider the real woman whose story was taken from her by a male author um, to turn her into this feminist champion? I think the thing about Ibsen scholarship is that it's been largely focused on the plays themselves. And, um, and we, we've quite rever reverentially tiptoed around all these slightly unsavory aspects of Ibsen's personal life, you know, especially his relationships with the women around him, and especially younger women and, and his wife. And I think this project in forcing us to take this long, hard look at precisely these aspects of Ibsen's life. I suspect, like lots of people, I consider that I'm quite knowledgeable about Ibsen. I studied Ibsen when I was at college. Um, I've heard all the, the academic and, and um, uh, more casual stories of him being like the first feminist uh, playwright, this being uh, Nora being one of the first feminist uh, characters in, um, in contemporary drama. And I didn't know any of this story about where that character came from. I hadn't heard any of this. I hadn't heard a sniff of this. So that in itself is sort of fascinating. But I think one of the things that I, I find as a, as a woman in the 21st century, I find riveting about it, is that this is, at bottom line, fairly casual exploitation of a woman's life. So my experience of working on this project so far with Breach has, has been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a rare opportunity as a theatre scholar to get to work in a theatre and with real live actors, um, directors and creatives. Very often we are brought in to do things like write the program notes or give a talk or something like that and to actually be involved in the creative process from the beginning and to see something I've lived with for so long in terms of research um, and thinking about is absolutely it's, it's so uh, exciting and, and, and enthralling to be part of that process, but most importantly, it informs my own research. So I learn things from watching these characters, these, these real life kind of people from, from long ago, come to life in front of me and, and put a different spin or put a different um, inflection on some of the very well-known material that we're dealing with, letters, plays, etc. It all comes to life in a way that then informs my own thinking. We're working with people who know so much about this and tapping into that as a resource. Being able to be really free and creative in a room and then have someone who would be like, oh, actually, you've discovered something which is really authentic or actually you've kind of gone a little bit too far with that. Um, that's a really interesting collaboration, I think, for us. I think it has definitely shed new perspectives on this being the first feminist play and the first feminist character. Um, we've been learning a lot about the context of um, A Doll's House and what it did for the women's rights movement. Um, 
But Laura Keeler herself posed the question of, you know, this was the effect that it had on me, was it worth it? Laura Keeler was a prolific writer. She published her first novel when she was about 17 or 18 years old. And across her life, she wrote between 20 to 30 pieces of work. And yet, the lasting impression that we have of her is, is just this fictional image of her that Ibsen creates in a doll's house. And I think, I think that's why this work is so important, that you know, it's necessary for us to bring this to stage and so people remember that behind this fictional, you know, charming skylark was a real person who suffered because of what Ibsen did to her story. So out of this week, we've answered a lot of questions, but we've also come up with a whole lot of other questions. Um, creative questions about the form of the play, but also research questions for Zen and Kirsten to go off and discover. So what we're really hoping is that we can continue this collaboration between us, uh, and that over the course of probably the next year or so, we can develop this into a fully formed show.